Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Proverbs chapter 23. I think I have about three to five key points that you're going to learn today. So when you're going to learn about the immoral woman who's basically a prostitute, you're going to learn about um, your mother and your father wanting to be proud of you, for you to do great. You're going to learn about people who are drinking who are drinkers, right? You're going to learn about people preparing feasts and flashing you with flashy things, what that really means. You're going to learn. I thought I could do it. I know I can. Let's see. Ooh. And for people who are seeking wealth, too, because, ooh, I know. I was like, I'm seeking wealth. How is this possible, God? How am I do it? Then I have to remember. All right, so if you're seeking wealth. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to read over Proverbs chapter 23. So let's get into it. It says, when you sit down to dine with a ruler, consider carefully what is set before you. Consider carefully what's around you when you sit with people of high influence. For you will put a knife to your throat if you are a man of great appetite. Jesus. For you will put a knife to your throat if you're a man of great appetite. I think that goes to say, like, um, if you're hungry, you know, and you, it's like that saying where you, you give yourself anything you want. You feed yourself anything you want. You have no self-control over your appetite, over yourself, like over your urges, over your ways. Get control, people. Do not desire his delicacies. For it is deceptive food or offered to you with questionable motive. Wow. Do not desire his delicacies, for it is deceptive food offered to you with questionable motive. Be careful. Do not weary yourself with the overwhelming desire to gain wealth. Jesus, cease, cease from your own understanding of it. So, like, how do you attain wealth if you don't seek it? How do you do that? It just comes to you. Just keep going. Okay, I understand. So you seek knowledge and wisdom and the wealth comes to you. Continue to learn. Continue to promote what you're doing and be great and continue to move in the way of God. And God will eventually give you the wealth that you want and that, yeah, he will give you what you want. So don't go seeking it. It will come to you. Just like the love of your life, they won't. Don't go seeking them because the man will find you, you know, or you'll cross paths with that woman. Don't go outside looking. It will come to you. When you set your eyes on wealth, it is suddenly gone. So it's like that saying where if you really want something so bad and you keep going after it and you can't get it. But the moment you stop, the moment you just let God do what he wants to do, everything starts to fall into place. So take your breaks. Know and trust that God is aligning your steps. Stop overwhelming yourself. Stop working so hard to get something. You're physically draining yourself when all you have to do is spiritually believe and continue to take those small steps. It says, when you set your eyes on wealth, it is suddenly gone, for wealth certainly makes itself wings like an eagle that flies to the heaven. Do not eat the bread of a selfish man or desire his delicacies. Do not sit with people who are evil or wicked. Just because it, whatever, just because the grass looks greener on their side does not mean it's really green. Because some people spread that grass green is dead over there, okay? You're eating dead stuff. You're investing in dead people. You're investing in dead things. Use your discernment. Be cautious. Guard yourself. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he in behavior, one who manipulates. He says to you, eat and drink. Yet his heart is not with you, but it is begrudging the cost. The morsel which you have eaten, you will vomit up, Jesus, and you will waste your compliments. Do not speak in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the godly wisdom of your words. Do not move the ancient landmark at the boundary of the proper and do not go into the fields of the fatherless. I feel like I read this. I don't know. It just sounds so familiar from chapter 22. Because this is in chapter 22 too. Okay. So do not move the ancient landmark at the boundary of the property. Do not move it. And do not go into the fields of the fatherless to take what is theirs. Mm, don't be taking, you know, they're taking advantage of people. People got who don't got fathers for their render is strong and mighty, and he will plead their case against you. Apply your heart to discipline and your ears to words of knowledge. 
Remember, in chapter 22, you seek fun all the time. You're going to be poor for the rest of your life. Life is not always sun, sunshine and butterflies. Like, you are meant to work, but work smarter, not harder. You work with faith. Work without faith is dead, okay? Do not withhold discipline from the child. Don't spit a rod. If you swat him with a reed like rod, apply it with godly wisdom, he will not die. You shall swat him with the reed like rod and rescue his life from Sheol the netherland the place of the dead my son if your heart is wise my heart will also be glad yes my heart will rejoice when your lips speak right things do not let your heart envy sinners who live godless lives and have no hope of salvation so i know sometimes i say oh it must be nice to be like living this way oh oh it must be great well i'm taking this the lonely route right well i'm not trying to lose my soul don't i i'd be like dang if only i had only fans i mean how much money i can make but when you're doing it the right way, Jesus, got to stop saying stuff like that, you know, just watch what you say, because um, it's kind of a little bit of envy, like, dang, y'all making a lot of money because I want the money, right? And it's just like, no, I'm seeking God's knowledge. I'm doing the right thing. I'm seeking his wisdom. Oh, no, you're being rude. No, no, sir. Anyways, but continue to live in the reverent worship, fear of the Lord day by day. Surely there is a future and a reward and your hope and expectation will not be cut off. God got us. He's not going to cut us off. Listen, my son, and be wise and direct your heart in the way of the Lord. Bear with me. <laughs> Do not associate with heavy drinkers of wine. Jesus. Or with glutinous eaters of meat. Jesus. So, you know, something I always like found myself um, not eating meat all the time. And... I, that's crazy do not be glutinous eaters of meat do not associate with heavy drinkers of wine for the heavy drinker and the gluten will come to poverty guys you like to drink all the time you like to feast and eat all the time you will come to poverty you're glutinous and you're drunk and the drowsiness of an overindulgence will close one with rags. And I'm thinking of rags like you're going to jail. Because, first of all, if you drink and drive, and you got to go to jail. Okay? But seriously, don't drink and drive. Don't be a heavy drinker. And cut, cut down on the meat just a little bit. Cut down on it. Nah? Listen to your father who sired you. And do not despise your mother when she is old. A lot of men despise their mothers. A lot of women despise their mothers and their fathers. Guys, I'm trying to tell you to get your life right. Talk to them. Buy truth and do and do not sell it. Ooh, Jesus. Buy truth and do not sell it. Wow. So when you buy courses and books and stuff, don't go selling what you just, the truth you just learned. Give it out for free. Sell what you have to offer, not what you just bought. Get wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who sires a wise child will have joy in him. You bring your parents joy, and some of you don't care about them, but you should, because it's a circle, like it's a full circle of life from God. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who gave birth to you rejoice in your wise and godly choices. My son, give, my, give me your heart, and let your eyes delight in my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit. Jesus, this got intense real fast. And an immoral woman is a narrow well, and she lurks and lies and wait like a robber who waits for prey. And she increases the fatherless among men, Jesus Christ, because there are women out here who will rob you of your time. They'll rob you. They'll have you going out here doing stuff. They'll make you get out of character, go after another man. Now, guess what? You in jail. Guess what? You in jail. Guess what? You done. You done. You done. Kind of, you done, you done got arrested. You done did all this other stuff. Be man, be careful these women that y'all go after. Be very much careful. Okay? Be and women the same. Women stop being immoral and prostituting. They call it tricking. This is this is for people who are tricking. We do not envy tricking. Okay, yes, you get money from it, but God is not is not okay with it. You are tricking men and then you're leading them down to a deep, deep pit. I need you to let them go. Let these godly men go. God is calling them and God is calling you to stop tricking please okay because it is immoral and that is prostitution tricking is not cool not cool at all he who 
Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Whose eyes are red and dim? Wounds without cause. You cry for no reason. What's going on? Those who linger long over wine. Those who go to taste mixed wine. Do not look at wine when it's red. When it sparkles in a glass. When it goes down smoothly. At the last it at the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper jesus your drunken eyes will see strange things and your mind will utter perverse things untrue things twisted things and you will be as unsteady as one who lies down in the middle of the sea and as vulnerable to disaster as one who lies down on the top of a ship's mast saying they have stricken me Shout thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I walk away? When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. What in the world? Jesus. So chapter 23 is a message for those who like to drink. Those who like to indulge in wine and alcoholic beverages. Um, I was once you. Um, not saying mine is as bad as yours or it's just as worse as yours. But to me, it was bad, right? You wake up and you're drinking every day in the morning and afternoon and nighttime. Um, and yeah, you're just numb. Just numb to the world, trying to numb it all. Got out the military and I was just sad. I was very much sad and I was down. Um, and I went to drinking. I did. I went to smoking marijuana too. Um, I say stay away from drugs. And that's why I do not drink when I am, when I don't feel like one myself. I stay away from drink. I stay away from alcohol. I stay away from wine. I want to be a clear mind and a clear heart. I want to not be in my feelings when I have a glass of wine. I just really want to have it to enjoy. And I haven't had a drink yet this year. Um, so yeah, that says a lot. I ain't ready. <laughs> I'm just not ready. Um, so for those who are drinking, this is a message for you to watch what you're drinking or just stop right now. I know you can't go cold turkey, but slowly, slowly take yourself off, you know, get friends to help you um, hold yourself accountable or you can message me. and I'm definitely here for you. Um, this is for those who are using drinking to their advantage. This is for the woman who is immoral. This is for the woman who are leading men down the wrong path and trapping them. This is for the woman or the man who is preparing feasts before people and tricking them and lying to them and deceiving them, offering them food and glory and all these good things when they have ulterior motives. This chapter is about, you know, being using your discernment to figure out what is true, what is not true, what is real, what is not real, what is of good and what is not of evil. God has, God has rude. God has given us wisdom and knowledge on the wicked ways and how they think and how they move. Now it's up to us to trust him and ourselves to know who is not for us, who is for us. Okay. Today, for those who like to drink wine and over drink and um, get drunk, this is a message for you to lay off. Start to dwindle down. It's time. You've been drinking and having these habits for way too long. You've been supporting that friend who has a drinking problem for way too long. You haven't been saying anything. You're steady going out and drinking. She always calling you. He's always calling you when he's drunk and he has problems. This is that message. That friends get drunk and they get angry. They get aggressive. This is that message. You want to save your friend. Lead him to God. You want to save yourself. Get close to God. Okay? It's not too late. This is the message for the woman who is immoral. Who are leading men down the wrong path. This is a message for you. Women have a lot of power over men. Women can lead and intentionally and unintentionally lead men down the wrong path. They can lead you to go break, break laws. They can lead you to break yourself. They can lead you to temptation. They can lead you to tricking. They can lead you to prostitution. They can lead you to all those things. Men get control over yourself, not just control over your emotions, but what's inside of your pants and your heart. Get it together. Go to God. Okay. Your discernment, you being able to figure out who is deceiving you won't get stronger unless you get close to God because it won't feel right. And if you got to take them to church and <laughs> listen, you got to start taking people to church. Also, the third one is to be careful who feeds you. Who prepares a feast before you? Who brings you so much luxury and lavish things? Who just pours and showers you with gifts? What is their motive? 
And I know people say, I just want to give to you something. No, like some people definitely have a motive. You don't know me and you're showering me already. Are you love bombing me? You don't know me, but you over here showering me with other stuff and feasts and stuff. What's going on here? Take your time when you're getting to know people. Okay, take your time getting to know people. Don't rush in it. All right. Proverbs is teaching us. Don't rush into nothing. Take your time. Take your time. So, yeah. Um, and mother and my father, you know, mothers and fathers, they want to be proud of their kids. They want you to be great. I know some people don't feel that way or see it that way, but they do. See, don't seek wealth, seek knowledge and keep learning. And I feel like what that means is that when you seek when you seek knowledge, you seek better ways to improve yourself, better ways to reach your target audience, better way to find the people who are out there for you, who will invest in you and buy from you. Like they say, when you go after um, your job and your career, the money and everything else will fall in. That's exactly what you need to do. Keep focusing on yourself. So this is also a message to keep focusing on yourself. You're on the right path. Stop seeking the wealth and the money so bad because it won't come to you. You're trying so hard. I know Myron Golden talked about it. He talked about wealth. He talked about how you just can't seek it. You're going to remain poor. You know what I'm saying? And um, I follow this influencer called Viva La Posh. She has a pink Jeep. Um, she has really dope content for those who are looking to get into content creation. So this was for you, um, just in case. Just a little gem at the end. And that concludes Chapter 23. I hope everyone has a blessed day. I'll see you guys tomorrow with Chapter 24. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment down below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.